Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. Uh, this MOOC gives some details of Future Grid as a system and a project. It builds on an earlier MOOC called the Overview. It repeats some of those slides, uh, takes a few and expands them, but it doesn't cover everything in that overview. But it does cover most things. Uh, there are also additional MOOCs on Future Grid. Uh, one covers how to dub. Um, log into the portal and to get a project. Others cover core technologies such as uh, RAIN, Grizzly, Hadoop, and things like that. Um, have a great MOOC, and we'll get started on this one. Thank you. All right, so here's what we're going to cover today. We'll recap the overview MOOC. We'll give uh, the hard one a little more detail than uh, in the overview. We will um, Describe uh, some example future grid projects, not repeating those described in the overview. We will give some details as one of the major projects, which is exceed testing of future grid. We'll describe the relation of future grid to other projects in uh, greater detail than in the overview. We'll discuss the future activities of future grid in more detail and the security of future grid in more detail. Then we uh, move on to image generation, giving a little more detail on the, on the timing measurements and the architecture for doing this. And again, uh, this is followed by monitoring, where we'll give more details than before on monitoring. And finally, we'll discuss, uh, as part of the education, uh, how, to, um, how to use appliances or what appliances uh, enable. First, the recap of the overview. So these slides are just a few uh, of the overview, setting the scene for Future Grid. This is uh, an overview of Future Grid, testbed as a service. Future Grid is part of the NSF Exceeds uh, system, which is a set of uh, resources around the country. And unlike most of those resources, it is not a production system, but rather a testbed. And its focus is clouds, although it also supports HPC and grids, uh, because you need all of those to build systems. And also comparison of clouds and HPC, for example, is an important capability that Future Grid offers. We're now coming to the end of our third year of use, and we have one more year to go. Um, the Future Grid testbed provides to its users the support of research, and that research goes all the way from fundamental computer science to very applied applications, which is commonly called computational science. It provides a very flexible platform for both developing and testing systems, and for looking at issues like interoperability, functionality, performance of software, and evaluating different technologies against each other. Future Grid is customizable by the user at essentially all levels of the stack. It's accessed interactively and supports, as we said already, grid, cloud, and HPC software. And it can run with or without hypervisors, namely with or without virtual machines. A particular feature of Future Grid is its rich education and teaching platform. It offers uh, with support OpenStack, Eucalyptus, and Nimbus, three major open source virtual machine managers. It also runs Open Nebula uh, and actually CloudStack, although those are not supported. Uh, they're used in various, some of the projects. And we support the use of MPI and other high performance computing technologies. And this environment is currently uh, allocated in a rather static fashion uh, with discrete changes. We expect to be moving soon to a much more dynamic uh, software-defined system approach where we can go back and forth between the different choices in a very flexible fashion. So this is the future grid operating model. If you go to Amazon, you're just you will get a bunch of virtual machines, essentially, unless you take specialized services. But on Future Grid, you can do almost anything. And then the model of Future Grid is you pick an image, that image is loaded, 
that image can or can or cannot I mean can or does not have um, virtual machines and we hypervisors and you make that choice. So you can go back and forth between these different choices and as I mentioned earlier, you can actually compare the overhead of hypervisors by running the same hardware with and without hypervisors. We have image libraries for a lot of the basic technologies, MPI, OpenMP, MapReduce. Um, Dryad is actually now deprecated because Microsoft has stopped offering it, but there's Hadoop and Twister. Twister is an example of iterative MapReduce. We have the European uh, G Lite environment, Unicore, Globus. At uh, the low level, we have Zen, KVM. We have ScaleMP on the on the cluster Echo, that's a distributed shared memory environment. And we support, as I've mentioned, Nimbus, Eucalyptus, OpenStack, Open Nebula. And we also have Windows if you, although that's not typically advertised, which you can use. And as mentioned, this can be done statically by pre-configured uh, nodes or dynamically. And of course, uh, as more users deposit more software in the library, uh, the capability of future grid grows. It is worth emphasizing the future grid is small with only 4,700 distributed cores, and it has uh, an almost dedicated network, which we'll find out in the, when we look at the hardware in more detail. Future Grid has a great set of partners. It is led by Indiana University, which has uh, substantial hardware. The partners in red have hardware. It also looks, is responsible for the architecture, the core software, and a lot of the support. San Diego has uh, hardware, two clusters, Lima and Sierra. And it, uh, its main focus is Inca and the monitoring and performance uh, capabilities. The University of Char Chicago and Argon National Labs, they have the cluster hotel, and their focus is support of Nimbus. University of Florida is in charge of education and outreach, and um, has the virtual networking software Vine. It also develops many of the appliances. University of Southern California Information Sciences Institute, it works on Pegasus, and now enabling a workflow on especially cloud systems. It also develops that workflow to manage experiments. I know workflow is um, well known from the grid um, research days, but workflow is critical for clouds, because cloud supports software as a service, and workflow is precisely what you need to compose services to build a bigger system. Sometimes got a mashup in the more commodity uh, arena. University of Tennessee Knoxville is responsible for benchmarking and getting Pappy to work on virtual machines. TAC, University of Texas at Austin Advanced Computing Center, is responsible for Portal. It has a very significant machine, Alamo, and also some of the Exceed integration. The other Exceed integration site is University of Virginia, which also has a significant responsibility for the Open Grid Forum and its standards.